Friends, thanks again for joining me for another edition of TiffinCast. I'm your host, Seishu, and today I'm speaking with Catherine Just, a photographer based on the West Coast. Hi. Catherine, hey, welcome, and uh, thank you. thanks for making the time for, yeah. for chatting with us. Um, you know, you and I met thanks to Tara Gentile, who's a, a life coach, and um, she's an amazing woman. She, she's written lots of books. But I think she and I, when we talked last time, uh, it was about uh, really mapping out uh, the what she considers a, the customer's what did, you, what did you call it the customer perspective, perspective map map the customer right perspective map right yeah. and what what I really enjoyed about that process was it helped me find exactly what I do best mm -hmm. and matching it with what my clients expectations were as well yeah yeah, that's really an interesting question, isn't it? To it try is. to figure it is. that out. Right. Um, and I wanted to ask you, uh, and you and I decided to talk today because you are you have this very interesting summit, the Soulful Summit. I'm looking at your webpage as I'm talking to you yeah. right now. It's called the Soulful Summit. And um, so tell me a little bit about that and how that works in terms of matching your own views of what you want to do and how how your audience audiences expectations match up as well i don't know if mm. that makes sense yeah it totally does okay i think because we speak the same language because we're we both know tara and that that you know that conversation is happening yes. for both of us um <clears throat> the soulful summit started last year as a way for me to try something completely different literally somebody suggested it just to leverage my to grow my list Summits are basically known as those free things, and I use the you know quotes free because you are si signing up to be on their list, and that's what it's usually um, for. You you find people to interview that are that are inspiring to many many people uh -huh. that have bigger lists than you, right. and hopefully um, as a result of that, their people will come to your event, and then they will find out about you, right. and they will want to stay on your list. Right. And of course, they could unsubscribe afterwards, but the hope is that they will stay because they found something about you that, that they need as well. However, I started to ask people if they would be in my summit, and what I found was I was really um, uh, intrigued by the process of asking. Um, there is an initial feeling of fear around talking to the people that we see online as being really successful. Uh, they must know something that I don't. I'm comparing my insides to their outsides, and I don't measure up. All of that stuff is present. Um, and just the process of asking created, um, created a curiosity in me about how far I could go with that. And um, so it was going to be five people, and it turned out to be 24 people. Wow. Um, oh. and, it, and, you know, people said no, and people said yes. And that was sort of interesting to me to just see what happened how I felt about myself if somebody said no or somebody said yes, and am I going to take this personally? And sometimes I did and sometimes I didn't. And one, what it came down to for me was I have an event and it's either going to align with this person or not. And I can't really convince anybody. I just have to be myself and really show up authentically and just say, hey, I have this thing and I feel like you might be interested in it. And it was really about breaking down the barriers of that. You know, we put those people on pedestals. Why don't we like pull the curtain back and ask them what they do when they feel fear? Mm. Um, I really wanted to know. And so um, out of this leveraging thing um, came this conversation that I really actually wanted to have with people that I was inspired by. And I loved it. So I found out two things about myself through that process because as a photographer, that's not necessarily what I'm doing. I'm not necessarily interviewing people. I'm not on video. I'm not like finding my mentors or the people that inspire me every day. So what I found was is that I love having conversations with people. Um, I love listening and being, I'm curious. I'm very curious about people. Um, and I learn so much more when I, when I take action. You know? And Madonna says it perfectly. Nothing plus nothing equals nothing. It's in one of her songs. And I, 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 that stuck, struck with me because um, this event was, I think, also um, deliberate in that I think a lot of entrepreneurs don't take action because they're afraid. And so this was like my, I'm going to do this and face my fears too. So it had like double meanings of like me putting myself out there and also 
talking about the fears with these people. So fast forward to this year, I've also decided that um, uh, I wanted to do it every year because it was so great for me to see um, what these people said. I just really am still curious. And it became less about building my list, right. and more about continuing the conversation. And uh, this year, what I found to be true is that not only are entrepreneurs, creatives, and artists struggling at times to know that they're valuable and that what they're producing matters. Um, on the flip side, I have a son who is four years old named Max who happens to have Down syndrome. And we have a whole culture who thinks that my son and people like him are probably not as valuable as you and I because they don't do the things the way that we do them and can't do the things that we do. So we're just going to like put them in an institution or label them or put them down the hallway in a special ed class and sort of, you know, give them services sort of to help them live their best lives, but not really. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, and I think that we do that to ourselves. I think that we don't allow ourselves to show up in a way, you know, we don't give ourselves permission to, to get um, better at what we're doing because we're not, we're questioning ourselves. Let me just take a sip. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, I, this sort of inspires me to ask you, how does running or, or hosting Soulful Summit help you as a photographer? Well, I think everything informs everything, okay. honestly. Okay. I remember being at a uh, photography retreat that I was teaching, and I was talking about the four agreements written by Miguel Ruiz, and I was talking about you know, not taking things personally and always doing your best and, and being impeccable with your world with your words, excuse me, and it starts with how you're talking to yourself. And somebody actually asked that question, like, what does this have to do with photography? And I, my answer was it has everything to do with photography and it has everything to do with everything. Like, I don't separate photography as um, f-stops and shutter speeds and composition and um, subject matter. I really do think that how I'm living my life, uh, it, it informs what I'm going to take pictures of and how I'm going to take pictures and, and the way that I show up. Am I present? Am I um, dealing with my fears? Am I doing the, the projects that I really want to be doing or am I just doing the thing that I know I'm good at but I'd really r rather do something else but it seems too, I don't understand it. It's too much. It's too expensive, blah, blah, blah. I mean, I think all those conversations are just universal conversations whether I'm a photographer or not or a mom or I'm whatever it is. So it was really... Um, geared towards <clears throat> people <laughs> yeah. rather than a certain type of right. um, vocation. Uh, go ahead. Uh, from year to year, like from last year to this year, uh, are you thematically different in terms of what you are you're trying to address in your summit? Or is it somewhat similar and, but advanced in each year? How does that work? I felt like, I feel like every year I want to... I want to push my own boundaries. So if I'm asking, if I want other people to be able to have tools that will help them take action, then I need to also challenge myself too. So I wanted it to be a bit bigger. So I asked more people that scared me, <laughs> you know, what, what happens if I send this email out? What, you know, and, and getting more and more comfortable in my own skin that I actually deserve to have these conversations. Why wouldn't I? Um, so it's bigger. There are 35 people this year. Um, and I've asked people that I, um, you know, Darren Rouse has a bazillion people following him on problogger.net, and right. I just had a conversation with him. He wasn't like, he wasn't that guy. He was a human being. So that, right. I think, is the difference. But this year is really more about the philanthropy piece where I did tie in the, um, the Down syndrome community needing a hand up, just like we need a hand to remember that we're valuable. I think we, we can offer a hand elsewhere, too. And since it's close to my heart, um, the Down syndrome community and, and what I've learned from being in it is that there really aren't that many resources for them. Mm -hmm. And I think there should be. And so uh, if you buy the summit interviews and uh, then you get them for life, like when the event happens, they're just live for that day and then they're gone forever. So if you miss them and you, you know you're going to miss them, you can buy them or you miss some and you wanted to see them, um, you can own them. And half of the proceeds are going to a Down syndrome organization that is the best in the world at researching uh, how to better educate people with Down syndrome. And I think once we learn how to educate them based on who they are and how mm -hmm. they learn, mm -hmm. then they can show up in better ways 
and actualize their dreams too. And I find that we're all just trying to do that, aren't we? So it just made sense for me to combine it during this one event. Like everything else in my that I offer is photography based, but it also has this underlying theme of uh, knowing that we're valuable, moving through fear, owning our greatness, mm-hmm. um, so that we can actualize our fullest potential, whatever that means for us. Uh, so this just felt like a natural evolution of my summit. It's very intriguing. Um, mostly because I think these are the themes that are sort of running concurrently in my head as well. I think we spoke very briefly before we started recording um, that these these themes about showing value or displaying value to our clients um, and being appreciated and the fact that, um, you know, what you call being really present. Uh, yeah. I think they're all connected in some way because um, – I know from from my own experiences, when I go out to photograph a family, for instance, the more I'm present for my for that for that family, uh, the more powerful those images are. Yeah. And um, you know, I'm reading from your from your website, uh, and you're describing your experience photographing uh, Danielle Laporte at the World Domination Summit. Um, and I was really moved by how you waited for that moment, which I mm. think uh, I don't I don't know very many people, and I'm not trying to flatter you here. Uh, I don't know very many people who, who 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 practice that that sense of waiting and waiting and waiting and just sort of yeah. breathing in, breathing out, and saying yes, I'm here. I'm with this moment. I'm looking at it, and um, and you posted a picture of Daniel Laporte's legs, uh, sort of from stage view. Yeah. And that gesture is just divine. I know it. You know, there's nothing more to, uh, I mean, to say than it says. There's light. There's gesture. That the 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 speaker, uh, the the microphone wire twirling your eye way, you know, right into the the frame is just glorious, you know? It's just like, of course you're going to celebrate that moment, you know? Yeah, thank you. Um, Yeah. So I think think it's, I want to tie it in, though, with how the summit will help photographers or creative people or just anybody, really, to understand that being more present will help them be better people, number one, but yeah. also be able to see the world with a little bit more clarity. What do you think? Does that, does is, that, does that all connect? Yes, I mean, I think that's the basis for my class in plain sight where we take a picture of the same thing for 30 days. You just take one picture of the same thing for 30 days and that forces you to become curious. Um, especially when you're halfway through and you're bored. Um, and especially for a photographer who does family shoots or weddings, which I have done, um, you sort of, at least for me, have, got, have had situations where I sort of know what to expect and I become less curious about what's actually happening in the moment because I, I think I already know. Like I've got the, this in the can because I have these certain poses I'm going to do. I know what light to look for, but I'm not really having an I'm not really showing up fully. I am there, but I'm not really showing up fully to pay attention to what's happening right now. Mm-hmm. And I think that is what happened with when I think that is what happens with photographers anyway. I think we've gotten out of the habit of it because of digital photography and we can just take 1500 and look at them later mm-hmm. and fix it. But I think because for one I did learn with film, so there was a sort of a mm-hmm. need to not take a thousand pictures of the same thing. But to really pay attention to what is in the frame and what's important and what's not important and the story that you want to tell. And is everything in the frame telling the story? Does it all need to be there? And, uh, and looking at where things are cut off and what, what needs to be in and what doesn't and, and how much do you need and all of those things, of course. But I think underneath that is just the essence that you bring to that event or that whatever it is that you're photographing. And that I, I really feel that it shifts the way that you create images because I've had that experience for myself. 
And I'll tell you just briefly, like the in plain sight class, and we do this in, in the deepening course as well. But I had the experience of being very frustrated in a situation in my life, which was my son not wanting to take a nap, and me having this thought going through my head of frustration, resentment of where I'd rather be, of the things that I could be getting done, but he's not doing, he's not getting the memo. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> yes. and so I have to be with him, but I'm not really present. Like, <laughs> I think even having those conversations in your head um, is not being present. So, of course, there might be dialogue, but, but how much are you hooked by that dialogue? And how is it affecting your um, experience in this moment? And so I took my camera and decided to try to shift my attention by taking pictures of nap time. And so I would take a picture as soon as he fell asleep of the two of us. And what I saw was I was missing a lot of stuff. I might have been there and I might have been providing him a, an environment for him to go to sleep, but I was missing the fact that there was a sacred thing happening between the two of us. And the way that the light falls on the bed and the way that it, he has porcelain skin. And, I, you know, every day I became curious every day about how he was going to fall asleep. Sometimes he was smooshed up against my face and sometimes his foot was against my cheek. And uh so I became more curious and less interested in leaving. And I, one of my mottos is don't leave before the miracle happens. And I think that that also ties into what we're thinking about. Because I think when we're thinking about, you know, if we're feeling victimized or frustrated or we don't want to be there or we're feeling insecure and we're not really present to hear what the person's saying to us, we're missing the moment that matters. And I feel like that totally ties into photography because if we're, not connected, we're really not going to, I think you can capture a beautiful image for sure. Mm -hmm. But our, but I really think that the experience is, is also key because it's a life that you're living too. Are you going to live it in your head or are you going to live it being fully present and waiting for what the universe wants to show you? Wow. Um, that's a very, very, very good question. Very good question. Yeah, I mean, I still struggle with that. I mean, I get yeah. frustrated if my son's not getting the memo that I have, like, a summit to create, and I have things to type, and I have a newsletter to send out, and I have deadlines, you know? Right, and right. he just wants to get on my lap and watch Elmo on my computer, and he is having a meltdown. And I'm like, okay, I'm not going to get to do this right now. What am I going to do? Am I going to be present with my son, or am I, am I not? I mean, I have a choice. It's about awareness, right? Once I have awareness that my mind is running the show... And that's why I'm suffering right now. It's not necessarily about what's happening in the world because him sitting on my lap is not dangerous or torturous. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's the way that I'm viewing things. And, you know, it's all about, this is such a cliche metaphor, but it's all about the lens that we're looking through, you know. But it, it's really true. Um, and so the camera, even my iPhone, has been used as a tool for transformation. And that really is the key for me. I do have projects that I'm working on, personal projects. And I also have these moments in my life where I need the camera to help me remember to wake up. So that's, um, that's, I, I would, I'm going to say that, say it straight up. That's beautiful. The, Thank fact, you. the fact that you are using your camera to wake up. I mean, you're not just, it's not the physical waking up, but the internal waking up of like, let's be present, you know? Yeah. Which I think um, I wish I wish more photographers would would use their cameras in that way, you know, instead of yeah. sort of you know sending you know just taking pictures one after the other yeah. mi mindlessly. I know to just sort of hold off, you know, and just sort of wait the moment, uh, which I think uh, yeah. we've we've already talked about. Um, Catherine, I know you're heading to. World Domination Summit again. Yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> Proudly. <laughs> Tell me a little bit about that experience because I am I am tempted to go and I wanted to know from you that you've been there once before. Yeah. What what can one expect uh, to when when one goes there? I've been twice before. Oh, have you? Okay. <laughs> okay. And I'm going again just to say you know that like it was that good the first time I wanted to go again and. Uh, and it changed. It was very different this last time I went because there were 3,000 people. And the year before, there were only 1,000. So it did feel a little bit wow. more like we were with our people because they were right there. But with 3,000 people, there was a bigger crowd to find, you know, find the people that you already knew. Um, 
For me, it was so important because I find that as an entrepreneur, I'm alone a lot. I might be online and surrounded by people, sort of, and finding those like-minded people has been really important for me because I'm really about connecting and really about the truth underneath the surface of mm -hmm. what we're doing. Um, and I found through taking classes online that I had some things in common with these people that I never had met in person. So just that alone, to be able to go to this place where all those people are um, who share that common desire to do good in the world while creating a business um, or, you know, there are people that are travel hackers mm -hmm. and I, I don't know much about it, so I can't speak to that. Mm -hmm. But people that are trying to do remarkable things in a conventional world, um, it's really exciting. And it, it, it gives you inspiration for the next year to come. And the speakers um, spoke to me both times. I think there were times that all of us were crying at some point because they said the thing that we weren't saying mm. in a way that we needed to hear it. Um, and the breakout sessions, you know, Danielle Laporte's there. I mean, when you look at the lineup of people, those are all the people that I, I'm already following. So to have them all in one place is extraordinary. Um, and it just keeps getting better and better as um, Chris, the, the guy that started the whole thing, you know, does one and then sh takes a look at it and shifts it to become even, how can it become better? I mean, he's such a great, uh, it's, it's really amazing to just watch him because he really is all about service. Right. And I was there, the first year I was there, he gave everybody a $100 bill. Right. And there were a thousand people there. He didn't make money, you know, he gave money. Yeah. Um, and we, and we were all given an opportunity to start something. Right. And he has that book, the hundred dollar startup. Right. So it was like, here you go. What are you going to do? Right. I get, I have goosebumps thinking about that. And so I love that. I love his beliefs. I love his philosophy on life and business. And that's what I want to be around. And so I'm still, there's a, um, Facebook group with all of us that went last year and, and we still get excited about having those conversations Most and definitely. supporting each other and doing our next great thing. And there are like groups in every city. So in San Diego, it's one of the biggest groups and they meet regularly. And I'm like, let me in. I want to be a part, you know, mm -hmm. I, there's something about the energy of being with like-minded people who are taking action right. or who might need a help up to take action. And they want to help. Like, I think the judgment, um, and the comparison thing sort of falls away at the world domination summit. It's really about, it's not about all that. It's just really about supporting each other. So I can't say enough good things about it. Excellent. So. Well, if uh, they haven't sold out yet, I, I might be so tempted to just jump in and, and, and make those plans to be there in July of next year. Um, Catherine, thank you so much for your time. Uh, yeah, absolutely. It's, it's been a pleasure speaking with you about Soulful Summit, uh, talking to you about photography, life, priorities, uh, clarity, and being present. Uh, I think these are these are topics that are, uh, for some reason or the other, are becoming more and more important to me personally. Mm -hmm. And I know from my own experiences, as, as I've mentioned before, uh, being present and being clear on why I want to photograph a family, for instance, uh, yeah. makes those images, I know from, from experience that those images are more valuable to put it yeah. bluntly, for my, my clients. Not in the money yeah. sense, but in the sense that they're stronger and they're more meaningful for them. So, uh, yeah. and to create that alone, I mean, is, is a gift. And so, yeah. uh, so that, me, that behooves us to be not present, you see? I think it, it, it almost requires us as creative people to be more present because it is to be a full service to be present yeah. to be to be not present would be a disservice right 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 and and uh i when you were talking i just want to say one more thing before we wrap it up there was a it reminds me of a moment where i was photographing a wedding and i had a long lens and i was off to the side during the ceremony and my it was like 2.8 focused at the bride and i was just waiting and i would just hold my camera there because i knew that there was going to be a moment you know that moment that happens when you know that it's time to take the picture? I was waiting for that to happen. And all of those, you know, up to that point, I could have taken a million pictures because she was beautiful. But um, I still remember that picture that I took. 
And I don't have a great memory, but because I was curious and waiting for it, that moment, it, I felt so much a part of what they were experiencing because I was really, I had let go of the need to be talking to myself and I was just really watching. Mm -hmm. It was just such a great moment for me uh, to have that experience. I, I could feel their love. I mean, it was just incredible to witness and to, and I felt honored to have seen that so close up through that lens of her saying yes to this new chapter in her life. And, uh, and I don't think that we often recognize how privileged we are to be, to have that camera and to really pay attention right. and to take those right. pictures. So I know we have already said our goodbyes, but and I have to ask you this follow-up question. How do you recommend creative people or photographers uh, be present? I mean, I think, I think we've sort of circled around the idea that, okay, well, this is what Soulful Summit is about. This is how we, are, we should be. But what, what would you say are a few pieces of advice you'd give a photographer who is starting out, who is considering photography, who probably doesn't know that the, the sheer potential and the power of photography when, when delivered with presence and clarity, what would you say to that person do these two, three things to sort of mm. come together, you know, get with it, you know? Yeah, yeah. I think it's a practice. I think it's all progress. I don't think that it's like all of a sudden we're just present and that's it. <laughs> right, right, right. Absolutely. So I just think it, it's a, a choice to de and it's a decision to um, give yourself permission to become aware of what you're thinking <laughs> and then ask yourself a question, you know, if you're hooked by it and suffering. Um, is this true? And is this necessary in this moment? How can I let this go in this moment and become curious about what's actually happening on the other side of this lens? Like when you want to leave a reception that's never ending, how can you stay fully present? You know, mm -hmm. or it's like the loudest, most obnoxious wedding. I keep going back to the wedding thing. Sure. And you want to leave and you're tired and they're just like, you gave them unlimited hours and you haven't figured out how to have boundaries yet and you're there. How do you show up again? Like put a different lens on, get closer. What is it that you're missing? Look right. at the table again. Look at the people, look at the textures. What story can you tell from another point of view? Have you sat on a chair and looked up or have you stood on the chair and looked down? Like really becoming uh, more uh, of a, of a, I think a, you're investigating the situation like an archaeologist looking for clues. So that's one way. I mean, it's, I think it's about just reframing a situation. And another way would really be, I think it's, um, for me, it's, it's very important to have something outside the photography business that helps me focus. So whether it's reading spiritual books or, you know, there are photographers that have retreats that I've gone to that really connect spirit and photography. That's helped me. And, and that's what I do in my retreats as well. I mean, that just informs when I'm, doing a headshot. It doesn't have to look like a spiritual experience, Absolutely. but it right. still can be. So looking for ways outside of photography to really um, inform your spiritual uh, practice. And the third thing would be uh, to just do your best and know like that expectation of getting out into the world. If you're a new business, I mean, there's just so much writing on it, you know, financially, emotionally, you're taking it personally, all that stuff. And I think that when you sink back down in a, into the truth that you're a talented human being and really go back to yourself and what's true rather than looking at all the stuff that's online and all the classes you need to take and all of that, I think that when you're still and you're quiet and you can shut your eyes for a minute and ask yourself that question that's driving you crazy and wait, the answer will become clear. I think that's really helpful. That's been helpful to me. Again, thank you, Catherine. Appreciate you your, your time. And, you and, and uh, I look forward to... A follow-up conversation after the Soulful Summit. Hopefully we can schedule that as well. I love it. Let's do it. All right. <laughs> Thanks again. Take care. Bye. Bye.